Gemini. Hey. There's my party people. I love you guys. I'm actually recording your video last, but save the best for last, right? I hope you're having a beautiful month whenever you're watching this. Woo! Cards are flying already, you guys. Oh, you guys are some of my favorite people. I always have fun with Gemini. I think I mentioned that last time. A couple of my closest friends are Gemini. I think you had a pretty intense January, you guys. A lot was moving. A lot of things were great, but a lot of things were moving. A lot of new doors were opened. A lot of new questions were asked. So you're kind of set up this month to be like, all right, where am I now? Well, it is going to be all about good communication. It is going to be all about setting healthy boundaries. I mean, you are going to need to continually speak your truth to people. You're really great communicators. One of your best qualities, you know. I always know where I stand with my Gemini friends. You know, they get in touch with me. They let me know how they're feeling. They don't, you guys don't shy away from expressing yourselves. And I like that because I know that I don't have to worry about, um, I don't have to worry about where you are. Like, I don't have to guess. Uh, but, you know, use that skill this month. Sometimes you need to use it more than others. And in this month, because so much went down in January for you. So many things changed. So many energies were coming in. So many questions were coming in. So many mysteries were surrounding you. Some of you met some new people started new projects, started a new social circle. A lot of questions came in. And with that, afterward, you have to, uh, you know, make sure that you're staying true to yourself and keeping your vision clear and that you're setting healthy boundaries for yourself when you need a rest or when you need a break or when you need somebody to show up more for you. That's going to be key for you. Because this is going to be a month where you test new ideas out. This is going to be a month where you test new strategies out. And that requires precision in our communication. First off the bat, the chariot. The chariot is seeing. It's a very direct course kind of thing, right? This isn't a revolutionary card at all. This is the one that is asking you to communicate clearly. And it needs to be heart-centered. Don't sugarcoat for people to make them comfortable. You're very social and you want people to be happy and you want people to be having fun. But you have to stay true to your heart center. A lot of emotional news is coming in for you this month. A lot of emotional questions about how to move forward are coming in for you this month. As with any revolutionary month, you're going to need to take some time to connect in with your emotional state. You're a funny sign this month. A lot of signs, there's been like two camps this month. There's been the camp of people who are just moving forward and everything's happening all at once. And there's been the camp of people that have to restock, take stock and sit back and take the extra rest. You guys kind of have both. So on the one hand, this is going to be a month where you are testing boundaries, you are setting new ones, you are communicating, you are trying new ways of doing things out. You're trying just new things right and left. On the other hand, you're also waiting. You're also thinking. You're also taking deep breaths. What a wonderful creative process, though, you guys. I think of all the signs you can handle it. You know, you can go out there and test out a whole bunch of things and, you know, be action-oriented and crazy and then come home, spend some time with your emotions and feel them, connect with them. And then, you know, wake up the next day and go in and get some work done. I see really good things for your work and your money. You might feel a little unbalanced at first. But you're going to be testing out new ways of partnership, new ways of working that help you find a little bit more balance in your money. 
And that's one of the ways you're going to be testing, actually, is in your work habits, your work routines, the way you visualize the work that you do in the world. That's one of the big themes you're going to be connecting with and why you're going to need those that Four of Cups and Four of Swords energy where you just take a nap or you journal or you take an evening out and go to the movies with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your friends um, because uh, that kind of when you're revolutionizing the way you work. Some of you might be leaving a side job. Some of you might be starting a side job. Some of you might be starting a new job altogether. Some of you might be working on a new team or working differently with your colleagues where it's going to flow much better, but it's going to be very different for you. But I see rewards coming in as you test these boundaries, as you build new boundaries for yourself so that you have healthy communication, you're going to start seeing the rewards pretty quickly. You're an air sign and you're ruled by Mercury, so things move quickly for you. You communicate quickly, you get things out there, you don't waddle around and wait because you have that chariot energy. This is really undergirding your reading. Hardcore. Alright, let's get to the big guns though in this reading because, okay, I'm, I'm kind of prepping you up for the big guard. <laughs> the death card. And this is revolution. This is truly testing new boundaries, turning over a new leaf. And that is why you need this so much. I love the death card, you guys. It is one of my favorite cards in the deck because it is new beginnings because it is one of the most revolutionary cards you can have. And I really like it in this spread because it comes with the Knight of Pentacles. When you have these two, look at these guys, they're kind of, they're weirdly mirroring, aren't they? That's pretty freaky actually, look at that. They both have the pentacle. They both are riding forward. This is a great energy because that, those two energies together, I'll keep holding them up here actually, those two energies together really balance each other out because, okay, you are going to be testing new things out. How exciting is that? But you're going to be doing it in a way that is very practical and grounded. You're going to be testing them out in a very safe way, in a very clear-sighted way, where yes, you're revolutionizing your world, yes, you're trying new things out, yes, you're communicating and experiencing love and relationship and work in a totally new way, which is a little unsettling, but you're doing it in a way that's constructive. You know, the death card has two elements. It's got the getting rid of the old, and intrinsically within that idea is the new. And in this spread, the way that it's reading, it's much more focused on the new growth on the opening up of a new experience, of expanding up, growing up. February, we are in Aquarius, it's fellow, fellow air sign. It's your ninth house. It is the house of expansion. It is the house of world travel and philosophy and the way we think about the world in religious terms. So you are expanding your mind. You're expanding what's possible for you. For some of you, that is going to be your relationships. For some of you, you've met somebody in, the, in recent months and they are changing the way you think about your life. They are changing the way you're connecting with your heart center because for some of you that have met somebody you do feel a heart-centered energy that you might not have felt before. That is going to be revolutionary and that's where this comes in and where you start to figure out your new boundaries and your new communication styles. Huge. For some of you, it you know, a lot of you, it's going to be a work-related, money-related thing. And you're going to really be thinking about how it connects with your heart center. It's going to feel a little surprising. You will feel slightly off balance. Revolutionary thinking in our own minds can really throw us off sometimes, especially initially. 
You are gonna handle it really well though because you have so much positive energy in this deck. And because you're gonna take those breaks, you're gonna process, you're gonna incorporate subconsciously. But yeah, you have this, first of all, you have this. Your ships are coming back in. Anything that you were setting out a few months before, you're gonna start seeing that kind of crop up for you and you're gonna stay grounded. And a big part of why you're gonna stay grounded is because you do, I keep pulling these up, but these are so key for you this month. I'm gonna just take some time. I'm gonna integrate it. So that when you go back and you start having those communications again with your new coworkers, your new lovers, with your family, whatever it may be, when you start doing those communication things, you will feel grounded, you will feel clear, you will know exactly who you are and how you wanna get there step by step. I'm really excited for you, Gemini, because um, a few signs are actually going through. This year is going to be an expansive year, and I think you are included in that. You're included in that expansiveness. Now, I am going to clarify this death card because I do think, you know, for some, it's, it's the key card in this spread. You guys are ready for a change. You are a mutable sign. You know how to roll with the punches. And some, a lot of you actually have fun rolling with the punches, I think. Like, I can't think of a sign that's better at flowing with it. Your air, you're able to flow, you're able to go with it. You're able, you have a curiosity, a natural curiosity uh, to you that makes this kind of thinking and this kind of work move forward. And you guys, I don't know, how this happens, but it does. And this is the magic of tarot. I got another four of swords. This is really, truly such a kind, soft card. This is really a card of self-care and waiting. So here's, here's the thing. The death card is going to open up some doors for you. It's going to get you moving. You're not gonna get all of your answers, you're not gonna get it all squared away this month. Basically is what this Four of Swords is saying. You're starting a process that is expanding you out and you're, you're starting to get those little answers back, which is great. Having both of those cards is very powerful. Those are both super positive flowing cards. But this is a long range revolution and you have two beautiful cards flanking that Four of Swords. intuitive knowing about what you need, what you want, and learning how to temper it in this physical world. Like I was just saying, you know, February is the month of Aquarius, and Aquarius for you, Gemini, is your ninth house. Now the ninth house is traditionally ruled by Jupiter. The ninth house is Sagittarius in the, in the, in the order, when you start with Aries, the ninth house of Sagittarius. Sagittarius is ruled by temperance. You are rethinking the way you're doing this life. You're rethinking what you're capable of in your love life. You're rethinking what you're capable of in your work life. And you're realizing that you have so much to give. You're realizing that you have have this knowing and these abilities to communicate and to think outside the box and to try things and to rile things up and to have things move. And you're going to start seeing little pieces of that success come in for you. You really are. You're going to go from the beginning of the month a little bit uncertain, a little bit like, oh, what am I doing? To the end of the month, you're going to really start naturally feeling that high priestess energy, that temperance energy that allows you to see clearly, to work from your heart, from your gut, and to keep testing out new ways of doing things, especially when it comes to love. In fact, I want to pull one more card because I just... Okay, a lot of you, yeah, you're going to have new work opportunities. You're going to be working in a different way, but there's just this, uh, some of you really, seriously, your questions about love and your capabilities for that are strong. All right. You're going to have to hold your own, and you're going to have to think with grounded energy once again. 
hold your own. That's just, for me, that's just going back to this Temperance and High Priestess. When you have the Seven of Wands, it's basically asking you to just don't question yourself. Stick with it. Stick with it. You might feel a little, like there's a little combativeness. But the good news is that you're grounded. You have some really earthy energy. You have a lot of earth in this reading. And um, that's great for you. So when you're going through a revolution, one of the best energies you can have to help you ground down and clarify everything is that earth energy. It's wonderful. For especially like, I'm a, I have a lot of fire in my chart. And air, fire and air both can really use earth energy. Because earth energy is the kind of energy that helps you to just plug away and get things done. And that's what you're going to need. But it is, it's going to be a month of reflection. It's going to be a mentally revolutionary month. Communicationally revolutionary month. That's what I'm talking about. Really beautiful though. Like, there's a certain level of magic happening for Gemini that is really esoteric and um, deep. I think of all the signs actually in February, you are going to be the sign that is feeling that interconnected magic, that there's a big pot and it's stirring and it's brewing and you're starting to move with it. You're kind of looking into the underbelly and you're looking through the other side of the looking glass almost and coming back out and bringing with you new tools and skills and ways of doing things. So I think by the end of February, you are going to be a very wonderful sign to have around because you're going to have insights that inspire the people around you. And they're going to wonder how you got that. But Gemini, you guys do have a certain level of magic to you. It's this brightness, this movement that you have where you're able to transcend all these different levels. And you're going to really utilize that this month so that you can plant the seeds for your next thing. I'm really curious to see what you all experience in this transformational energy. And when you look from the other side of the looking glass, I am very excited for your transition and your journey this month. I hope you leave some comments. I hope you have a beautiful February, a revolutionary February, an esoteric February, an eye-opening February, a revolution. Yeah, I said revolutionary. I hope it's great. I hope you all find new answers and ways of doing things. Uh, I will leave my email and my website below so you can get in touch with me if you have questions or you would like a private reading. And I will see you in March. And once again, Gemini, have a beautiful one. I hope it is amazing and magical and you feel the power that you have because you are an extremely powerful sign. I'll see you soon.